Hi and welcome students. Today's tutorial will be in Microsoft Access 2016 and I'll be showing you how to create table relationships. In this example, I'm going to show you how to create a one-to-many relationship between two tables. Let's go ahead and get started. So we see that I have my database open right here and I have two tables. This first one is called Lab Supplies. Let's take a look at the fields in this table. I double click it to open it up. In this example, we are running a lab and we have all of these different supplies needed in our lab. One of the columns is called vendor ID. This is the column that I want you to focus on for this example. The vendor ID column contains all of the vendors that sell us the labs that we or the lab supplies that we use. So we see that one vendor like V100 here can sell us multiple supplies. You will see it be it'll be repeated throughout several records within our table right here. All right, so there's a little bit about the lab supplies table. Let's close that and let's open up vendors. And so the vendors, again, are the vendors that sell us the lab supplies. So we have their contact information, all their postal code, email, and all that stuff. But notice right over here along the left side, we have a, a column called vendor ID. These vendor IDs right here, these are the vendor IDs that sell us the lab supplies, right? So we looked at V100 earlier, and we said, oh, they sold us uh, some other supplies. So that looks good. So now that we've focused on this vendor ID column and we've established that it's in both tables and it, they basically reference each other, let's go ahead and show you how to create a relationship between the two tables to where if it updates in one table, it'll automatically update in the other. So I'm going to close the vendors table. Now it's time to create the relationship. So to create a relationship, we're going to go up here to the database tools tab. Database tools. So you click on database tools and it's going to open up all these different buttons here. Now, there's a group right here called Relationships, and there's a button right here called Relationships. So let's go ahead and click on that. So when you click on Relationships, the Show Table dialog box will appear. Now sometimes it won't show up automatically. If it doesn't show up, let's say mine didn't show up, so I'm going to close it real fast, and I, I clicked Relationships and it's not here, I could go right up here to the Relationships Tools Design tab, which should be open by default, go to the Relationships group, and click this button right here, Show Table. And there it is. All right, so we have the show table dialog box back up. Now I'm going to double click on my two tables. All right, so I have my two tables here, and now I'm going to close this show table dialog box. And now what I have to do is I'm going to open up, or I have each of my two tables listed here, and notice that if I click and drag from the top, I can kind of move my tables around. So I'm gonna move my tables a little bit further from each other so that I can basically see uh, all of the fields within the table. But notice that each one still allows me to scroll. I'd rather see all of the fields at once. So if I go to the bottom right of the table, you'll see the icon will change to a sizing handle. I'm gonna increase the size of the table here. All right, so we've got lab supplies and we've got vendors, okay? Well, if we think about this, the vendor ID is on both of these right here. And so if I have vendors, and I have vendor ID under vendors, and I have my lab supplies, and I have vendor ID under lab supplies, what I could do is create a relationship between those two fields. So I'm gonna just click and drag from vendors over to vendor ID right here. Vendors, or sorry, vendor ID to vendor ID. So notice that when I click and drag on vendor ID and I start to drag, it gives me a no symbol until I get over to the other table and then I go right here to vendor ID. Now notice I'm at the point of the cursor, at the very tip of the cursor, and then I release. And then it says edit relationships and this edit relationships dialog box appears. And I have vendor ID and vendor ID right here. One says vendors, one says lab supplies. All right, now I'm gonna click on this right here, which is uh, enforce referential integrity. And then I'm gonna click both cascade options. And I'll show you what these do in just a little bit. But basically I click on those three things right there. It says vendor ID in both columns. And then I click create. All right, now you'll notice two symbols are created here. I'm gonna switch up the sides of my tables and notice that the uh, relationship follows. I'm gonna switch them just to make it easier to understand. Now, this says one right next to vendor ID. And then this down here says an infinity symbol. So what is it actually saying? It's saying one vendor, one, can provide many lab supplies, lab supplies. One vendor can 
provide many lab supplies. So what this is called is a one-to-many relationship. Again, a one-to-many relationship. So you say, what does it actually do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and click close right here. It'll ask me if I want to save the changes to the layout of the relationships. Since that's what I do want to do, I click yes. And then what it actually did was, well, let's see what it did. If I open up the lab supplies table, we see that it looks pretty much the same. Everything looks pretty much the same here. We still have V100 up here. Um, all right, so we close that one. And then we open up the vendors table. We say, oh, that looks pretty much the same too. We still got our vendor ID, but look at this. There's this little tiny plus sign to the left of the vendor ID column. All right, well, let's see what that does. If I click this plus sign on V100, we now see all four of the items that V100 supplies. So, th so this is really nice because what I can do now is if I quickly want to see, oh, what does V100 supply us? I could go right there and it gives me the four items that V100 supplies from the lab supplies table. So we say, oh, that's fantastic. Now we have an easy way from one table to basically look at both information just by clicking down on this option right here. Now when we enforce referential integrity, that means that one reference, uh, if we reference it on one, it'll reference on the other. Um, and then the cascade options are right here. So when we click the cascade options, that allows it to cascade down. So now we get to a point where we say, all right, that's awesome. But then we notice it says V002, V003, all the way down to 9, and then it goes to 100. Well, this one was probably supposed to be called V001. So I'm going to get rid of that 100 and type 001. And then I'll press tab or enter. Now check this out. I changed V001 here. That's the vendor ID of this um, this Parker Core Solutions. Well, I changed it here and I said, all right, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and close this table. Now, one of the great things about enfor enforcing referential integrity and creating relationships was now that when I open up lab supplies, check it out. This one right here that used to be V100 now says V001. So now I only have to update the database on one table as opposed to going through and finding every single vendor ID within this lab supplies table and changing it from V100 to V001. Since the relationship was already established between the two, I can change it in, in the uh, one-to-many table, which is the vendors table, the one that contains the one. And since I changed it in the vendors table, it automatically got updated in the lab supplies table. So hopefully this tutorial has helped explain a little bit about one-to-many relationships and how to adjust your relationships in Microsoft Access and help your database to communicate uh, within itself. So if this video has helped you, please take a look at my other Microsoft Access videos. Please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have a comment or video request, please put it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.